first of all, Paul, can, can you tell us why you're back in South Africa again after you were in the UK previously? Hi, Hayden, you're right. I, uh, obviously, I've been in the UK for about two years. I was, I was initially in Southampton, then I had a contract up north in Manchester. And then uh, I think it's just we got to a point, me and my management team were... I wasn't happy, they weren't happy, and so obviously after the loss, you know, it just, I don't think they were happy with the loss. And also, I wasn't happy, there's some things I wasn't happy about, and we seemed to clash heads a lot, me and the trainer, and so, you know, we agreed to, you know, just go separate ways and uh, carry on, you know, so no bad blood, good luck to them, good luck to me, and we're still friends, we're still chat, and so, yeah, so that's why I'm back here. You're now setting up base back in South Africa. What are the plans within South Africa? So initially, yeah, I had, uh, I was, I was planning to fight. Well, I, I had a, a planned fight for the 9th of October in Canada, and that's why I came back to South Africa, yeah, so that I could stay, what, set camp here and carry on. Yeah. So obviously, the first thing after the last like that is try to get back in the ring, try to get back to the winning way. No, so it was a good fight that if I won, I put me back straight up in the top 20 again in the world. And so, but I had a chat with uh, my one trainer, well, my ex trainer, Alan Tobio. He told me, you know, take a rest, you know, I think I don't rush it, you know. Obviously, the brain hasn't recovered fully as it is, and me going back, jumping straight back into it would actually put my life in danger. And so I thought it was real, you know. So I thought 10 years of boxing, you know, it's been a bit much, I need a bit of rest. And so I kind of laid back, took a bit of a rest. And then I spoke to my, my manager, my promoter who's still in Southampton, uh, Albert Chester, who's got a show this weekend. And he said, yeah, no worries. We we get you something in November. And so, yeah, so obviously I started my training last week. And the plan forward now is obviously preparing for that fight coming up in November. Let's go back again to your previous fight and obviously the reason why you're having to take a prolonged break and the change uh, of scenery. What was the game plan going into the fight? And... Um, what did you see happening that didn't happen? Well, initially, yeah, uh, the kid we knew was a strong kid. I, 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 I personally had uh, underestimated his power. And I thought he wasn't, I actually thought he wasn't a big guy in body and size, but you know, he surprised me at the way in. And in the fight, he was so much bigger than I was. And so the plan was obviously keep my distance, hit and move. And that's what we were trying to do. But now, you know, the few guys said, no, I should have jumped on him. But you know, that, that's like crying over spilled milk, yeah? And so the game plan was, you know, take him to the later runs, you know, he, he gets a lot of energy in the first few runs, and in the later run, he kind of gases out. But you know, I got caught early in the run, so well up to him. Yeah, and that's what didn't happen, you know. We tried prolonging the fight, take him to the deep end, take him later in the runs, put pressure, and kind of build up, progress as the fight went on. And so everyone get more and more and more pressure and let him fight. But also, I mean, we didn't get enough time for training. And so it was just us trying our luck, per se. As, uh, I think our fit, fitness was there, but maybe the weight cut had been a bit too much. But, you know, there's a lot to think about or to say. But the game plan was obviously to keep my distance, try to keep away from him from the first few rounds, take him to the later run and throw him in the deep end, make him uh, drown. Talking about that fight that you potentially had in Canada, it's just been put off slightly or postponed, let's say. Do you mind going to the guy's backyard and having to kind of fight the, re the refs, the judges and so forth? Well, to be honest, yeah, I, I, I was born in the Congo. And so having fought in South Africa has always been in someone else's backyard. And obviously having fought quite a few South African, I uh, fought, I think, two, two guys from uh, Botswana or Namibia two or three, and so I've always been in someone else's backyard. And so I don't mind, you know, when Russia called, we went to Russia, when UK called, we went to UK. And so I think at this level in my career, it's just about going to get the fights now. So it's no more sit at home, be relaxed. You know, I don't ever promote that that has enough money to be making me lay back here at home. And so I don't mind going to people's uh, backyard. And I love it, you know, it's an uh, experience. You know, I get to travel the world, see different part of the world. And so I don't mind. Where there's a good fight, if it's a good chance, America, Canada, Russia, wherever it is, I'm going there, mate. Obviously, a lot of people that we were watching this video and watching the SA Boxing Talk videos will know how you were in South Africa. How was it like in the UK while you were spending your time there? 
Well, UK is very different from South Africa, yeah? Uh, well, beside the fact that they don't have such good coffee and uh, the food ain't that well, yeah? But I mean, you know, life is easy, you know, per se, you know, the transportation is amazing, easy, you know, sit in a bus, jump on your Wi-Fi, have fun, and uh, no crime. And you know, just like your everyday life is made easy, and, uh, but the home is still home. I, I personally love staying in UK. I think uh, getting work is easy, so there's, there's obviously homeless people, which I think I just drunk, but also I could be wrong. I just think they, because the way the system works there, I don't see why anyone should be homeless, unless they don't want to work, unless they're lazy in there. And uh, yeah, so I love Southampton. And also it's different, yeah, because I grew up, I, I went to the south of UK, Southampton, and I moved up north, so it was a very different world. Because UK, it's almost every city you go to is so much different. It's almost like you went to another country. And so Southampton was very different. Manchester was different. Also I had the chance of traveling around UK, but I was in Bracknell, which is a small city. And also Reading, Reading is amazing. I love Reading. Wokingham, I got a friend in Wokingham. Then I went to York, and York is amazing. Probably the best place in UK. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of history, and then like the Vikings. And, and so there's a lot of history in UK, if you look for it. And uh, I love UK, and I love staying there. And so I could go back next year, because uh, I'm in talks with the guy from uh, UK, contacted me a few weeks ago, or a few days ago. He was speaking about me, maybe joining him next year. And so yeah, so that's something we can look into when next year comes, when the time comes for me to make my next move after this coming fight. Before we get back to what you're doing in South Africa, a quick mention of you outside of Old Trafford, considering you're an Arsenal supporter. So just uh, how did you feel about that? Uh, to be fair, yeah, uh, I'm not a Man, Man United supporter at all. You know, I, I would say I hate Manchester United and I wouldn't be wrong about that. But it was a good stadium, it was a good experience, you know, going there. And also, as much as you can hide Manchester United, it's still Old Trafford. I mean, all the cups, it's history, it's a lot of history there. And uh, it was a good experience. And also, I know my friends in South Africa had asked me to go there and take pictures. And so I done it for them. But on my own, I would never just wake up and go to Old Trafford. Although it's got the history, I'd rather download photographs off the internet. But it was a good experience when I went there. And I had a reason to go there. I went there, and I don't regret going there. It was a good stadium, lovely stadium. And it was a good day. Okay, now let's come back to South Africa. Who have you decided to train with? What's the sort of the plan with regards to that? Well, I, uh, early in my career, yeah, I used to train with Anton, obviously, who was my main trainer. But also, Hatt Stratum was always in my corner. He was my corner man for until my 13th fight when I won my first title against the local Temple Mandawe. And so, he's someone that has known me for so long. Even in the amateurs, I remember having to go to his German sparring, Cassius Beloy. And so he's known me for a very long time. And I just believe he knows what's best for me and he knows how to bring me up and what to do with me. And so I've decided to obviously try to head straight in for this coming fight and then uh, take it from there. As, as I said, you know, next year I could be going away. We're in talks with team in the uh, UK, team in Canada. I spoke to a guy from uh, France about two nights ago. And so there's a lot of possibilities in nature. For, but for this coming fight, I just want to focus strongly on being firstly in South Africa because I've got family, friends, and it's like my home. Although I wasn't born here, but South Africa is my home. And then uh, having this fight with Hyde Stratum and then seeing the way forward. How are you seeing the likes of, I'm going to call you a South African even though you're from Congo, uh, traveling like the likes of Lamati, I'm going to say Luther Clay, we moved very early in his life, Chris Van Heeren. How do you feel the guys are fearing overseas? I think uh, obviously Luther, Luther is, uh, although he's South African, he's been in UK too long and he's pretty much a British kid, yeah. And uh, he's doing well out there, he's a good fighter. Uh, I had a chance to train with him when I was down in Southampton. He's a good trainer, he's a good kid, he's focused, and he does the job well. I, th I, I see him doing very well. He's doing well at the moment. He had a very good win against uh, the line, the French line. And so I think he's a kid that's going to rise up to the top. Lamati is a very good kid. I used to, I remember having, I spotted him once or twice here by uh, Sean Smith when I was still in South Africa. And he's a good fighter, he's a very good fighter. And I think he's going to do well. Obviously, he's obviously in the lower weight division. He's highly rated in the IBF and WBC. And I see him doing well. Obviously, he hasn't fought yet. 
mm-hmm. and so it could be a bit much for me to say he's gonna do well but obviously just judging from what i know about him he's focused i think he's gonna do well and he's got a good trainer luther is trying is a good trainer i've heard of him never trained with him but i've seen the videos i had a chat with him when luther fought him right now and he seems good guy focused good trainer and um, chris obviously at the beginning of his career in united state wasn't so active you know i think a lot of criticism from guys in south africa he became a punching bag this and that and this and that but i think chris was doing well you know he got the chance to do things that he never would have been able to do here in south africa you know he got the chance to spar canelo miguel Cotto, and I, I mean we can say he's a sparring partner but who is a sparring you know not many people get the chance to mm-hmm. spar with the top guys in the game <coughs> and now obviously with the uh, WBC Invitational uh, competition yeah. is in. He's doing what? Well. You know, he's in the semi-final, uh, and, and I've read that he's the favorite to win the whole thing. And so I think, from all of us that have gone overseas, I think Chris is obviously doing be- better than the rest of us at the moment, big. And obviously, but obviously the rest of us are still building up, and I believe we're gonna get there one day. But uh, Chris is doing what? Well, you know, despite all the criticism people are giving about him being a uh, a sparring partner and taking too many shots and I think he's, he's done well for himself you know he's meeting big names mm. he's fought the best in the world you know something I don't think he would have done yeah I mean fighting guys like uh, Spence Ero Spence is uh, his top boy I mean that's something you can talk about you can brag about yeah I stepped in the ring at a point I was good enough to be rated same level as this guy and at the time being I think Chris was head rated higher than uh, Ero spent because he was the champion, the IBF International. And so I think he's doing well, despite what people say. I, I say, good job, Chris, keep doing what you're doing, let the people talk, and uh, yeah, good fighter. On a personal note, do you ever see yourself fighting back in South Africa again? Depends, you know. I, I think, obviously, it, being young, I can't say I'll never fight back in South Africa again. If the terms are good, we're happy, they're happy. I think it's always a possibility. I think in the past we've always looked at one uh, promoter, Golden Glass, but I think at the moment there's a lot of other promoters coming up and <coughs> who knows, maybe in the future we're going to have another promoter who's as big as Golden Glass, it's it to big fight up, you know, maybe even me and Chris, you know, so uh, I win last time I was in South Africa, yeah, I was training at uh, Durant in uh, this off ramp, I forgot the name, Link Shield, yeah, and Chris was training there. And we spoke about it. It was like, you know, it should be a good fight, a fight that the uh, South African fans want. But obviously, the terms have to be right. You know, we can't just go and fight. You know, he's, he's doing well. I was doing well at the time. And I believe I'll still do well. And so, I believe if I live in South Africa, maybe it should happen somewhere else. Maybe in America, maybe in UK or Canada if I move there. And you know, so it depends. So, but yeah, I'd love to maybe one day fight back in South Africa. All depends there. And lastly, would you like to thank anybody? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I uh, want to thank our got sponsors, Epsof. Epsof has sponsored me on and off. Even the first time I went to UK, they were my sponsors. They have sponsored me a lot. I want to thank Epsof. I've got a friend, Rajan Gonzalez. His his company is going to start sponsoring me as of next month. I'm in talk with another car dealer company that might come on board soon. And so yeah, and also South African fans, you know, they still love me the same even after the loss. And uh, good friends, good to be back in South Africa. And so, thank you everyone, friends, family, I love you guys, and uh, yeah, have a good one. Thank you. Thanks, man.